pulmonary edema is fluid accumulation within the interstitial space or alveoli of the lungs. Similar to peripheral edema, alterations in stalling forces, uh, increased capillary permeability, uh, lymphatic blockage can result in pulmonary edema. The most common causes relate to elevated capillary hydrostatic pressure and increased capillary permeability. For these reasons, pulmonary edema is divided into the cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic. Let me explain mechanisms of development of these forms of edema. First, let's talk about cardiogenic edema. Cardiogenic means that the reason of the pulmonary edema is in the heart. I will draw here a diagram to make it clear. I will divide our heart to the right and left sides. Here I'll write right atrium and right ventricle and over here we have left atrium and ventricle. Here we have a lungs. Uh, here I'm going to zoom uh, some alveoli with uh, alveoli capillary and between them over here we have uh, interstitial space, right? So when a patient has left ventricular failure, it means that the left ventricle is not able to pump blood to the aorta properly. In this case, hydrostatic pressure within the left ventricle will increase, which in turn increases pressure in the pulmonary veins. So blood which is going back up will lead to increasing hydrostatic pressure in the pulmonary capillaries. So in this case, fluid starts shifting to the interstitial space and alveoli and uh, edema develops. In spite of the fact that hydrostatic pressure will be increased not only in the capillary but also in pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins, in these two areas edema will not occur because pulmonary arteries and veins have a thick wall compared with pulmonary capillaries and also because interstitium around the capillary is soft and mushy. If you take a look at other places of your body, for example, let's take a look at skeletal muscle, interstitial space between these cells is very tight. Edema develops here rare than in the pulmonary interstitial space. Interstitial space here in the lungs is wide, even though it may become larger because normally alveoli are empty and uh, interstitium may expand its own space using this emptiness. If the right ventricular failure progresses, the fluid starts going to the alveoli and alveolar pulmonary edema develops. So, to confirm high pressure in the pulmonary arteries, we will measure pulmonary wedge pressure. This pressure is measured by inserting balloon-tipped catheter into the peripheral way, for example, jugular or femoral way, then advancing the catheter into the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, and then into a branch of the pulmonary artery. Just behind the tip of the catheter is a small balloon that can be inflated with air. The balloon is then deflated and catheter removed. Normal wedge pressure in the pulmonary capillary is roughly 8 to 12 millimeters of mercury. So in order to reduce the left atrial pressure, we have to use diuretics. Let's suppose in the second case, the patient has right ventricular failure. When the right ventricle fails, blood cannot properly return back to the heart. The blood will go back to the systemic capillaries. When the left ventricle fails, blood goes up to the pulmonary capillaries, and when the right ventricle fails, blood will go back to the systemic capillaries. It leads to increasing hydrostatic pressure in the all systemic capillaries, which in turn leads to generalized edema. So if a patient had both of them, I mean the right ventricular failure as well as left ventricular failure, we call it congestive heart failure. In this case, all the veins in the body will be congested, either in the pulmonary capillaries and systemic capillaries throughout the body. Now, let's talk about non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, which occurs because the pulmonary capillary permeability is increased. So, what does this mean? It means the patient has pulmonary edema, but the heart is not the cause of the edema. In other words, the heart is not playing a role here. Increased capillary permeability most common is caused by uh, sepsis, bacterial pneumonia when the toxins 
act on the capillary wall and increase permeability. Or in the case of trauma, when the capillary wall is damaged and fluid may freely leak out of the capillary to the interstitium and then to the alveoli. Well, finally, the gastric aspirations will also produce non-pulmonary edema. So in this case, pulmonary wet pressure is normal or low.